flying. In this high flying up in the air program, I should be showing you how to make this boomerang come back. I'll be making this beautiful glider. And we'll be having a gas looking at the work of a complete airhead. All we'll be explained a little bit later. <laughs> Woo! Okay, man. The magic of television. All right, I've got some magic for you. Kate, tell me, what's going to happen if I give this plank a big bang round about here with this hammer? Well, it's going to flip off and slap you in the face. You would think so, wouldn't you? OK, what would happen if I lay this sheet of newspaper over this plank and now give it a big bang? Well, the same thing. It'll flip up with the newspaper on top. You reckon? Yeah. OK, let's find out. Hey! <laughs> Fantastic! Wow. You know what happened there? Um, there's actually a column of air that sits on top of this newspaper and it reaches all the way up to space. And when I give this plank a bang, it can't move that column of air out of the way quick enough and so the plank breaks. Now that is impressive, but just wait for this. Mm -hmm. I've got a trick for you. I'm going to make this egg go inside this bottle without using my hands at all. Can't be done. It can, and I'm going to show you that it can at the end of the programme. And during the programme, there'll be a few clues to help you with the answer. Beautiful coil mobiles are spinning in a rising current of air, and they're really simple to make. All you need to start with is a circle of thin card. Now, I cut this by drawing round a plate. Then, the next thing I've done is I've decorated this. I've just used pens and made a, a squiggle round. And then you have to cut out the coil shape. Now, if you cut in just a couple of centimetres from the edge and then keep cutting round at the same distance, then you get that spiral shape and you do that all the way around until you get right to the middle and then it looks like this and I've put a, uh, a bit of string in the middle of this one as well to hang it up. Now the other thing you can do is cut it first and then decorate it afterwards and that's what I've done to make this snake pattern and it's even got a little rattle there on the end. The thing is, the air's always moving around inside from drafts under doors, people walking around, or even just your own breathing. But over a radiator, you get a constant rising current of air. And as it hits against the underside of these coil mobiles, that's what makes them spin round. Well, it's all got to do with air, air pressure. You see, wherever there's air, it presses on things. And the air surrounding these two beach balls are actually pressing on these beach balls from every direction. When I blow at the ball, I blow more air at the ball and it moves it away. But when I blow in the middle, something very strange happens. When I blow, I make the air in the middle move. And moving air has a lower air pressure. It doesn't press as much as the still air on the outside of the balls. And so that still air, when I blow in the middle, pushes the two balls together, like this. That was a very down-to-earth explanation, Gareth. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. That's because I'm very interested in air. 
and there's more to air than meets the eye. <laughs> Today's strange but true story is about the man who put the fizz into fizzy drinks. He lived over 200 years ago. He was a vicar and his name was Joseph Priestley. Joseph looked at all the things in the world and asked a great question. I wonder what that's made out of. These days, we know what most things are made out of. In fact, it even says so on the label. Look. List of ingredients. In Joseph's day, they didn't know what things were made of. He asked, I wonder what air is made out of? Tricky one, that. You can't see it, you can't feel it. How do you even know that air exists? Whilst musing on this thought, Joseph took himself for a walk to a brewery. Whilst wandering around at the brewery, Reverend Priestley stopped to look at the fermenting vats. This is wort, great name. It's actually a mash made up out of uh, sugar, hops, yeast and malt. He got very excited when he saw this. He noticed bubbles rising to the surface of the wort. That meant that there was gas present. He wanted to know what that gas was. And in those days, there were only two tests available. One was to take a lit candle and lower it into the gas to see what happened. The candle was snuffed out. Priestley called this bad air, which we now understand to mean that there was no oxygen in the gas. The other test was to take a living creature, like a little white mouse, and lower him into the gas. If the mouse snuffed it, then that confirmed that there was no oxygen in the gas. Very bad news for mice. But the good thing that Priestley did was to see what happens when you pass that gas through water. You see, the gas that was being produced by the fermenting beer was carbon dioxide. And when you pass carbon dioxide through water, you get carbonated water. Fizzy pop to you and me. All these bottles have got carbonated water in them. In fact, they've got more carbonated water in them than anything else. So if anyone ever asks you, what's that made of? Well, you can tell them about the curious curate who put the fizz into fizzy pop. Or you could read the label on the side of the bottle. Cheers. Why is it that some paper planes fly better than others? This one's a beautiful flower. I'm going to show you how to make it. All you need is some feather dusters, straws, paper clip, and some thin card. Now take your piece of card and fold it in thirds, crease it and then unfold it. Then fold in the corners down to that creased line again, both sides, and then fold it in half increase it and out again. Now cut in half down the middle and cut off those two corners and what you get is this. Now take those corners and put them aside because we're going to use those later. Take these two pieces, turn them around and overlap them and stick them together. Now this is where your straws come in. You're going to use them to strengthen this wing. Put them in the crease, stick them down there. There we go. Stick that down and cut off your corners. And what you've got now is your wing. It looks like this. Then you need your corners back. Now lay them out to make the, the shape of the glider. Take three straws, one in the middle, two, one either side like that. Then you stick the other piece on top up there and stick them down on the wing as well. Now, then you decorate it and it ends up looking something like this. Now with this one, I've um, made this the head at the front, it's got a yellow beak and when I fold that bit up, if I stick that together you can see it's got an eye and there's the beak there. Then if you want to decorate it with a few feathers off your feather duster then you've got the final thing. Now when it's flying the air over the top goes faster than the air underneath so it works a bit like Gareth's beach balls. The faster air is lower pressure than the air underneath and that pushes it up and keeps it flying. Now the only other thing you can do with is a weight on the front to keep it going forward and a paper clip's good for that so I'll just slip a paper clip on there. Okay Gareth? Whoa! Nice glider! But it won't fly back to Kate unless I throw it back to her because it's not a boomerang. 
but this is, and it comes back every time. How about that? Now, traditional boomerangs only have two wings, but if you were to throw this one indoors, it would probably smash the place to pieces. And my boomerang is safe for indoor use. Easy to make. All you need is a polystyrene ceiling tile from a DIY shop. The smoother, the better. This one's slightly grobbly, but you don't want a lumpy one. Now, draw your Big Bang boomerang pattern on the underside. Basically, it's a cross with round ends. Now, you'll need to cut out your pattern using a modelling knife, so you might need to get someone to help you to do that. But once it's cut out, you then bend the wings of the Big Bang Boomerang up a little bit. And the secret is in the throwing. You kind of throw it like a hatchet. You give it a bit of a flick and it should come back. Just like that. Now, why does a boomerang come back? Well, because it's spinning. As it spins through the air, this wing is moving faster than the bottom wing. And so it creates more lift, and it's this wing which steers the boomerang around in a circle. Now, the nice thing about all these flying ideas is they don't just work for model planes. No, they work for full-size aircraft too. Full-size gliders are really just big model planes. They've got a body, wings, and a tail. But you couldn't make one out of paper. It would be too heavy. This glider is made out of metal, a very light metal, aluminium. It's not solid, it's a skin stretched over an aluminium frame. So it's very light and very strong. The wings are also made of the same material. And if you look very carefully, just like Kate's glider, the top surface of the wing is curved. So the air travelling over the top has a greater distance to travel, so it travels faster, so it creates low pressure. Meanwhile, down here, on the underside of the wing, it's quite flat. So the air here moves fairly slowly and creates high pressure. And it's that pressure pushing on the underside of the wing which keeps a glider in the air. But what about controlling direction? Bending the tail up forces the tail down and the nose up and the glider climbs. the left hand wing up forces the left wing down and causes the glider to roll to the left. By balancing these controls against the lift generated by the wing, the pilot can make the glider do whatever he wants. That's it for this week's Big Bang. Just time to show you my egg trick. Now, this uses a flame, so it's not something to try at home. I've got this candle mounted on a special safety apparatus. Drop it into the bottle, put the egg on top. Whoop! It went pop. You're and touching it! No, I, I just had to put it in the right place. Now, what's happening is that the candle is burning up most of the oxygen inside that bottle, and so that means there's less air inside there. Look at it go! And so there's less air pressure, and the air pressure from outside is pushing down on it and should push it into the bottle. Come on! Come on! Oh, no, that egg's going! Look at it go! Look at it go! Oh, it's split There's a bit of an egg split side. on this side. Oh, come on. It's going to go! It's going to go! Wow! Oh. oh, dear me! Half an egg in a bottle. Most of it went in the bottle, didn't it? Come on, you're impressed. I'll give you seven out of ten for that. <laughs> That's it for the Big Bang for this week. Next week, optical illusions and the Big Bang taste test. Say goodbye, Kate. Bye-bye. <laughs>